Robert, how's it going, my man? Can you believe it's almost the end of the year, man? Can you believe it's almost the end of the year? AJ, man, how's it going, my man? Uh, Dave Culp, how's it all going? Tony Dorman, what's happening, my brother? Lisa, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, Robert is in the house as well. Fantastic. Christy, long time no see, my love. Hope everything has been fine and uh, everybody else is doing well. And uh, yes, it's almost getting into Christmas. So yeah, I hope you guys are all having a fantastic one. Aaron says, finally time to catch one. Fantastic. Brooklyn, what's happening, my love? Thank you so much. Justin, JJ, and Lisa says hello. Great stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited, um, you know, about this show today. Obviously, um, it is one of those shows that, um, you know, comes, it's coming in at the end of the year, and everybody's all excited, ready for the, um, you know, for Christmas, ready for the new year. Caroline Kennedy, how's it going? I'm still buzzing from yesterday's show. Aubrey, thank you so much for tuning in. And um, Kirsty says, needing some of your positive energy. You know I'm always here. Dorothy, oh my god, mom, how are you? Troy, hey, Troy, the shirt looks something like you. Um, when I wore it this morning, I was like, I need to take a picture so that Troy can notice that he's not the only one that knows how to pick up nice shirts. All right, so fantastic, guys. Everybody else is just tuning in. Please just settle in, pick a chair, and make sure, you know, you are you know, all comfortable, switch off everything, close the door, everybody else take them out of the room and make sure you have a pen and paper because what I've got um, right now today on this show is something you cannot Google anywhere else. It's the results that have happened within my business, what has doubled within my business so you can't find this anywhere else. Trevor, how's it going, my man? Thank you so much. All right, and if you can't watch the whole full 30 minutes, just save this video and come back and watch it later. I'm hoping it's going to be one of those, um, you know, centerpiece videos that I'm going to uh, put out there. All right, so my name is Prosper Taruvinga. If this is the first time you're tuning in, thank you so much. Basically, I believe that every online business should be profitable and enjoyable. So I have walked my talk this year. Everybody has seen me. If you have been with me since the start of the year, please put in the number one. If you've been with me since the last six months, put in the number two. And if you only heard about me the last three months, put in the number three. And if you only heard about me right now, please Hit the like button. You will get amongst it real soon. All right, Robert, you've been with me since the start of the year. I'm amazed with this. And you've seen that every single day when we could, um, you know, we, we, I showed up. All right. Every single day I was turning up online. Come hell, come high water. And you guys know the story of the three weeks when, um, you know, we did not have heating in this house. Um, you know, because the guys needed to figure out how it was all working out and my little girl was freezing but that didn't stop me from showing up throughout the whole year and guess what that, what that has done to my business we've doubled it in so many areas okay some people when they talk about doubling their business they just talk about the financial aspect but you know money is okay that has come through but also we've doubled in in, in the revenue we've doubled in the value we're putting out there we've doubled in the customers that we had this business the media um, you know appearances in the publicity we've doubled in um, relationships around the business we've doubled in investments we've doubled in the employees that are working behind the scenes that's why every single you know every Monday or so I always put up a status update saying you know big up to um, you know the crew behind the scenes because I wouldn't be able to do all of this without the people behind the scenes like you would notice even if I'm live like now work is being done my clients are all happy all of that is happening behind the scenes so we've doubled on um, collateral we've doubled on speaking engagements 
Talking of speaking engagements, look at Tina has just joined in. She's invited me to go and speak on Tuesday for a ladies' conference for the Bloom Network. So if you're going to be in Melbourne, Tina, can you put the event details on the show? Because I'm going to be there and I'm going to be sharing my value and I will be appreciating every single one of you guys in person that has been with me since day one. And like I say, guys, um, every single time I show up here, I'm creating for and I'm re- Relating to those people I'm going to be demanding money off of. I've been speaking to a lot of people throughout the whole year. Every single day I speak to an average 10, 15 people. Either some people want me to work for them. Either some people want me to help them uh, collaborate on something. Or I'm just finding out about their business. Or I'm interviewing them. Or they're asking me questions about how they too can have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. So this whole year I've learned a great deal. And there's seven things that I can really, really attribute to the growth of this company. Growth of my brand and growth growth of my business um, as a whole. First of all, I would like to thank you. You that's watching this show right now, I would like to thank you for your patronage. I'd like to thank you for being who you are, for your support, your unwavering, um, you know, strength and, 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 you know, the vibrations that you sent across to me every single day. Because without that, I would be nothing but a reed in water that's just being blown by the wind. So I really, really thank you. And I'm humbled to be in front of you right now and you watching this and you actually listening to this. All right. So essentially my job is to help small businesses like you to grow essentially through digital marketing strategies. Now, how can I say I can help your business grow if I haven't grown my business that is recognizable, if I haven't grown my own business, if I'm not walking the talk? So this is what I did this year that you that has been happening right in front of your eyes and it's not something that I'm going to be pulling wool across your your you know across your 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 eyes or anything else. Every single one of you guys has seen me show up um, on the online prosperity. Um, you know, I mean, I mean, for the lunch and learn um, at two p.m. A E S T without fail. All right, every one of you guys has seen me doing that. And that has helped me be in front of a lot more audiences. I've got a video that is sitting on over 3,000 views right now. Guess what? I cannot be Justin Bieber or Katy Perry, but I'm just a guy who's trying to make a dollar out of 50 cents in a spare room in his house, trying to feed my wife and my daughter. And you guys have been so good to me sharing my content and I really, really thank you so much for that. So today's show is basically, I'm going to be giving you an outline of the seven things that I did to actually value my online business in the last 12 months. All right. So first of all, when you're doing, when you're on the online space, you need to define what success means for you. I talked about this yesterday. Nicole, thank you so much for tuning in and thank you so much for being there since day one. All right. You need to define what success means for you. All right. Um, you need to define is success, uh, you know, does it mean more customers within your business? Does it mean more revenue? Does it mean more value, um, you know, that you're putting out there? Does it mean more retention? Does it mean more publicity for your business? Does it mean more brand awareness for your business? Does it mean monetary gain? Does it mean the relationships in and around your customers, your suppliers, and everybody else that has to wait around with your business? Does it mean the collateral or the, um, what do you call all the information that you would have, um, you know, accumulated throughout the year? Does it mean an in- increase in investments? Does it mean increase in employees or does it mean increase in your collateral? So you decide. Decide what success means to you. And for me, it has come about with, first of all, I've managed to establish this show right here, which you're watching, which, you know, a lot of people are watching and cannot live without, um, you know, at, at certain points. And they've gotten value from it. And I've also created an album that has all the testimonials that people are actually saying, um, you know, prosper because of you, I haven't given up. So you can always have a look at that. One of the things that I've actually, um, you know, 
put together. But first of all, the goal of every online business or the goal of every business is to continuously grow and to increase in value. So now this is the end of the year and we're going to be starting yet another year. One thing that I can tell you is you've got to have goals. This year, I set out to be an author, I set out to be a speaker, I set out to be a coach, I set out to be a seminar leader. I'm reading it because I wrote it over there and I have to look at it every single time. And I've went on and achieved all of those things. All right. So you can't hit a target that you cannot see. I set out to do a video every single day without fail. I set out to interview, um, you know, over 400, um, you know, entrepreneurs out there. And guess what? I'm sitting at almost 350 right now. Do you know what I mean? Um, Nicole says success is defined by exceeding your beyond obstacles, challenges and goals. All right. So obviously everyone is going to be starting to put out goals out there for, for, for next year, either to increase their business, to increase their brand awareness. And it's now easier, guys. These days, as long as you've got a phone, a mobile phone, like the one I'm speaking to right now, and a, and a pair of sweatpants, you can call yourself an entrepreneur. But are you going to be the one that's going to scale and grow that business? Because you've got to grow into the person that is capable of handling whether the influx of money that's going to come through or the customers that are going to be, you know, you're going to need to be supporting. All right. So if you've got any online business, the following tips are the things that have put me across um, throughout the, the last 12 months and have helped me to double the value of my business within the last one year. All right. One thing that has made a massive, massive difference and people knowing what my business does and why they should care about it is I have put out a lot of content frequently and consistently. All right. Post content frequently and consistently. The reason being I'm an SEO expert. All right. My job is to help your business get seen on Google, but I cannot help businesses that are not even functioning from the start. I cannot help your business if you are not even making any money within your business. All right. So I took it upon myself to educate my audience, to enlighten them and to actually you know, impose my knowledge onto them so that they can be, do and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Now, how did I do that? I did that using content. I put out stuff every single day of the year out there that got me closer to my audience, that got people to understand what my brand does and how I can be able to help them. Now, posting content frequently and consistently takes you away from, um, what, do, what do I usually say? You are no longer a one-click wonder, all right? People are tired of people that are just dabbling. You know why? Because anyone can just wake up and become an entrepreneur. But have you got the stick to itiveness that people are looking for? Because if you're, if you're in my position, I am taking on people's hopes, dreams, and tribulations, you know, in, in my hands, because if I'm taking on somebody's website, that's somebody's hopes, that's somebody's dreams. All right. I cannot just dabble with that. Most of people, most of the people out there, what they call a business is, is just their, their website. So if I mess it around with the SEO and, and, and I fail to get them results. Now I've failed not only them, but I've also failed myself. Can you imagine if I had customers that would just show up on my live feed every single day going, hey, you're just talking too much. You're not doing the work that you claim to be to be working. How bad a situation would that look? So you got to post content so you can educate your customers so that they get to know you, like you and trust you. People do business with those they know, like and trust. All right. Even if you are not ready today to, um, you know, to purchase right now, but I'm going to be top of mind because out of sight, out of mind, when people forget who you are, when people forget what it is that you do, how are they going to remember you when they actually need your service? So this year I increased the value that I was putting out there from videos, blogs, if even status updates. And every single time I've got one video that paid me up an upwards of almost 6,000 Australian dollars. How did that happen? I spoke to somebody for 30 minutes. Um, you know, I spoke on a video like this for 30 minutes. After that, they picked up the phone and then they did a deal with me. So I, I, I attribute that 60, that 6,000 to 
you know, that, that 30 minute show that I did. Because people are out there looking for information. Now, if your brand is the one providing that information, like I always say, they get to know you, like you, and trust you. Right? So when you post frequently and you, you, you give your website visitors something to engage them and something to come back for. All right? Because if they don't find that information from you, because users are fickle, they have no loyalty to your website or your brand, they're not going to wait until you're ready, bro. All right? So, you know, they're not going to come back to your site and do, um, they're going to go elsewhere because somebody out there is ready to grab them by the, you know? So secondly, the content has to be quality so that people can, don't get tired or people cannot find that content elsewhere. And the more you have really good quality content, the better you will be ranked by search engines, you know, such as Google, which then makes what I do and then I walk my talk. You know, every single time I'm always putting out fresh stuff, fresh content. You know why? It helps with the SEO. You know, and then pretty much after that, when you're posting regularly, Google, just like, you know, people, they love fresh content. People are always searching to discover new things. People are always searching to connect to new ideas. So you better be the person that is providing those ideas. Otherwise, your competition is doing that um, with your customers. And Aaron says, how do you create quality content consistently? Bruh, this is what I do. I read a minimum 30 minutes a day. All right. I constant because I'm committed to what I'm doing. Minimum 30 minutes a day. I read, I, 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 you know, I stumble onto new information because the more you expose yourself to new information, the more you're going to adopt, you know, new ways of thinking, new habits and new ways of life. Because what we know right now, if you knew how to get to the next level, you would have been there already, right? So you got to immerse yourself with continuous learning. Learn, learn, learn. And the more you learn, the more you're able to contribute. And the more you contribute, the more you get to keep. Because right now, every 30 minutes that I, I spend with you guys, guess what happens with that 30 minutes? I take this off of um, Facebook and I plug it onto YouTube. All right? That now becomes content on the second biggest search engine. Had I just spent the 30 minutes in my office, that time is wasted. All right. So you got to give off of, of, of what you have learned and that way it sticks with you. So putting out content more consistently and more often and more frequently, that's one thing that has catapulted the success of my business. No tricks, no gimmicks, nothing. These are books that I'm buying from the thrift shop. If you can look at it, $3.99 from Salvos. So I would think that wherever you are, you probably have, um, you know, a, a Salvos or a thrift shop or some other shop that you can pick up. You might think this is the only one. I can just pick up a random book and I'll show you um, uh, what I mean. Uh, where, where, where? Sometimes I take off the labels. Ah, yeah. Yeah, sometimes I take off the labels. But yeah, look at this. Three ninety nine from the thrift shop. Where's the camera? There you go. Do you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, you don't have to, you know, buy, you know, all those expensive books because once a book has left the bookshelf of, of, you know, bigger, you know, Amazon or whatever, uh, you know, book, bookshop that is, it, it, it has lost value, right? And um, <laughs> Rick Martin says, do comic books count? Well, if you're audience is into um you know is into uh science fiction if your audience if you can relate to your audience you know using that content that's in there and if it can help you get closer to your customers there uh, my man why not you know you can't i can't pick and choose what books um you know you you can use um robert says you mean graphic novels it depends on the subject covers well i'm talking personal development i'm talking um you know books that are within your own um you know your own space i mean obviously i'm talking to people that just maybe wanna um you, you know um if you really want to grow but if you want to mark around well 
it, it's the end of the year. Just look at your results. They will tell you exactly, um, you know, if, if the questions you're asking have actually made you gotten any further than you were last year. Okay. So the other thing that we did that doubled our, um, you know, that doubled the business in the last 12 months is to improve our conversion rates. There's no need. There's no reason of you bringing people over to your website and the website is not converting. All right. You know, this, this, this seems like it's cut and dried, but a lot of online businesses simply don't even try hard to, to, to improve their conversion rates. All right. You know, they, there's a lot of tools. There's a lot of softwares that are out there to help you see where your customers are actually coming in from and how to double up on, on, on those, you know, traffic uh, searches. You know, even, you know, the least savvy online entrepreneur, they can make drastic improvements by just diving into their Google Analytics. Find out where your customer is actually coming in from and double up on those efforts. And I found out that a lot of my customers are coming in from Facebook. So that's the reason why I didn't double onto LinkedIn. I didn't double onto Instagram or anything else like that. Look for where your traffic is coming from and feed that source. All right. Uh, Nicole says, I talked about how an individual's time is spent playing games, watching videos, um, won't have the return of investment on their financial future. Absolutely. You decide whatever you, you see, the thing is, okay. Um, those people that are asking, uh, you know, what books to read, have you ever cut an orange in half? Yeah. Can you type in, in the comments there? If you cut an orange in half and you squeeze it, what comes out of it? Can you, can you type in the comments there? What if you squeeze an orange that you've cut in half, what comes out of it? Yeah, just let me know there so that I'll continue with what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to go ahead with there. Nicole, if you cut an orange in half, what comes out of it? Because at the end of the day, people don't realize that um, Robert says juice, right? Now juice, what kind of juice comes out? Can you let me know what type of juice comes out of an orange that you've just slit in half? Because what is inside of your head is what comes out. All right. Yes, you may call it citrus juice or orange juice, but what is in your head is what comes out of your head. So garbage in, garbage out. You can't expect to squeeze an orange and get apple juice coming out of it. So you got to guard the influences of what goes into your mind. All right. And then whatever you put into your website and the type of traffic and the quality of that traffic is exactly what you're going to get out of it. If you're going to be sourcing that traffic from unscrupulous or questionable traffic sources, then what you're always going to get out of that is crap. All right. So, hey, Peter, thank you so much for tuning in, buddy. Thank you so much for tuning in. It was a really good episode that we had a little bit earlier on. So look at what your Google Analytics, um, you know, data is saying about the, the, the kind of client you are attracting and it will provide you so much insight and then go out there like your life depends on it to go after that customer. Make sure you're pleasing them. Make sure you're giving them enough information and make sure you are giving them so much value, right? So much value that they can't want to go anywhere else. All right. So Google analytics will be the first place to go to. So then if you then squeeze out the quality content that you're putting on your website, it is going to squeeze out or, you know, quality juice or quality customers that are willing and able to pay for you. Cause there's no point in you clamoring and going all over the place trying to attract people that don't care at all about your stuff all right so i just put out an episode with uh, peter a little bit earlier on and we're talking about branding i will be posting it later on um you know on my wall you should check it out it's really really amazing all right and once you've gotten those people those customers those future customers interact with them all right Interact more with your, your, your email subscribers because there's no point in you building a really big email list that you never, um, you know, interact with or you never correspond with. Yong Zhang, how's it going, my man? Do you know what I mean? So every online business has been told how to build an email list, but how are you really, really connecting with it? All right. So you need um, all those subscribers. Are you engaging them? Are you engaging with them? Every person on your list 
is a potential one dollar per email outing according to what they say and it's somebody who is genuinely interested in what interested in what you're offering so you gotta make sure that that person is just there because they want to and you're not holding them hostage all right every single person that's on your email list is a potential customer but also a lifelong brand ambassador if they're not ready to purchase right now are you giving them stuff to talk about your business when they're not around you do you give them little sound bites, little tidbits, little value so that they can talk about your brand at a barbecue when they go out and visit other people? Because you cannot reach as many people as you can all by yourself. You're going to need the, 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 the use of influencers and ambassadors. And all of those people are usually staying around your email list. So instead of you selling, 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 because everybody likes buying stuff. But nobody likes being sold to. Mix in your emails there, uh, like what we did this year, value, so much value that they can actually just unsubscribe because they feel inadequate themselves for not implementing your value. Present them with useful content, stuff that they can implement. And I can see some of my work in and around, um, you know, my news feed because I can see that people are implementing the things that I'm talking about. Some of them are well-renowned copywriters that are putting out, um, you, know, um, you know, content out there. After I put up a status or after I put out something, they then make it out like they're the ones that have thought out of that idea. Yes, I'm talking to you. You know yourself, bro. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's things like this. You really got to be out there to show your customers that you really want to help them by actually helping them instead of selling 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 and and um you know when you when when you you should use i think it's called the 80 20 principle 80 percent real value stuff that they can actually go off from maybe watching a video or or reading that email and implementing their business immediately and then 20 percent should be just you a call to action to something that they that then brings that customer closer to you in terms of payments because this type of interaction will keep them around for the long haul like i said people like buying stuff but they don't, they hate being sold to you know and they can start mentioning your, your content or sharing your stuff in, in, to the inner circle. And before you know it, you now are in front of a lot of people that you couldn't have done that by yourself, you know? All right? And one other thing that helped us really, really propel in this business was to actually cut down on unnecessary expenditure. All right? One thing was to cut down on unnecessary expenditure. And a smart business owner, or you know, like what we did is always we were always looking for ways to reduce, um, you know, operating costs. There's a few softwares that you probably have sitting in your hard drive that you're not using, but you're paying monthly subscriptions for. Look out for those. All right, they're called money suckers. They're just taking in money without you realizing. Yes, fifteen dollars a month, twenty dollars here, thirty dollars here, but at the end of the day, it all adds up. You know, it all adds up. So, you know, lower your expenses and, and then because it will translate into a bigger, bigger budget before you know it. And establish an, a, a monthly operating budget that never exceeds it. So that you know that you're not going to just fall for any shiny object that comes your way every Friday. So if you have a budget for, for, for learning materials, say you've got $200 a month for learning materials, if you've exceeded that budget, don't go over and beyond or go put a, 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 a lien on your house just so you can get into somebody's course that is not going to help you anyway. Always be looking for ways to cut your costs. All right? Because the more you get to keep, the more you actually get to keep. So you can test some of the things you can outsource, some of the things you can do without. What do you need five different, you know, courses of the same subject for? You know, why are you in five different masterminds? What are you even missing out on? Do you know what I mean? I mean, you, you should always be striving to lower your expenses and that way your, the money you get to keep increases. And that doesn't mean you have to go out there and start splurging. If you've got the money, you can negotiate for better deals with third parties. 
Because everybody's always trying to, you know, look for a win-win situation and people are ready to offer a discount. Ask for a discount before you go in and, and splurge, you know, just trying to look cool. I know of rich people that actually ask for discounts before they even pay full price. And one other thing that I actually did that doubled my business was to document the systems and processes of everything that I do. Right now, even if I'm not working, my business will still be functional because I documented everything that needs to be done, the content that needs to go out, um, you know, how the SEO is done, how we communicate to our customers, how we, um, you know, you know, crisis avert, all of those things I documented that that took a lot of time, but I did it this year. Because one of the reasons, you know, that franchises are actually successful is that every single operation is systemized. If I'm not here today, my business can still function. And that's the best part about it. Even if you look at my newsfeed right now, all my pages, they're co posting content while I'm on live like this. Or even my, my, my page is probably posting something while I'm on live. Some things I've automated, I've systemized, or I've outsourced. So that frees up my time to actually come in and give a lot of value. And that, my friend, has doubled my business a great deal. Because sitting around here doing all the mini miniature work or the, you know, um, you know, the effortless jobs, it's not taking me anywhere. I need to be here creating and relating to the audience that is going to, I'm going to be demanding money off of. So that's why even if you go to McDonald's, Every single cheeseburger is the same. You know what I mean? You get the same burger if you go to Japan or if you go to San Francisco or if you go to Sydney or if you go to Boston. It's all the same. So if you systemize and automate, you know, many aspects of your business, it's actually possible to get to be more efficient. Because right now, if you really look at it, you probably just did one piece of work from morning up until now. I know a lot of people that are like that. But if you look at the things that I've done, I've done four interviews so far. I'm doing this live now. I've written one, um, you know, a media call out that needs a marketing expert. I'm going to be doing um, a podcast as soon as I leave here. And then three other interviews because all the other work that I need to be doing is systemized and automated. So when you work on systemizing and documenting, you can always bring in anyone, a VA or your wife, your brother, your sister to come and help you with your, with your business, you know, and you know, it, it also v v makes the value of your business higher because you know, if somebody comes in, they know who needs to be hired for what, at what time and how are they going to be doing it. And buyers actually love businesses that are documented in detail because it makes the takeover of them seamless. Maybe you have an exit strategy or whatever it is, but at the end of the day, just make sure that whatever you're doing, you're systemizing every process that you are doing in your business so that it's replicatable. Or just in case you forget or you get sick, somebody can come into your business, look at what it is that they're supposed to be doing, and then they take over from you immediately. You know? And then, last but not least, um, you always hear about adding revenue streams. You need to have at least three or four different um, revenue streams within your business. The reason why a lot of businesses fail is because they, they fall short of cash flow, all right? Because you've got rentals to pay. You've got, um, you know, maybe outsourcing people to, to, to pay. You, you've got maybe softwares, uh, you know, to manage. You've got, you know, life expenses. You've got, yeah, food, clothing, all of those things. You might have a family. If you don't have a consistent flow of cash, or if you don't have a consistent flow of income coming in, sometimes it might be very, very difficult to see your business through, let alone double it. So if you add additional revenue streams, you know, it's a simple way for you to stay afloat. You know, by revenue streams, I'm talking about if you've got maybe a book or a course that can self-sustain itself. Maybe you sell that cost at $17 and then it continuously is, is selling itself, bringing in a little bit of revenue to support other, um, you know, um, existing, um, you know, uh, activities. Because if I didn't have that much, you know, revenue streams coming through, I wouldn't be able to sustain the live feed every single day because I will be wanting to do things that bring in the money. 
So, you know, introduce different product lines, you know, find out what the market wants, put out a product every single year that then sustains your business as, as you go, you know, and then you can just sell it to your email list once in a while. Do you know what I mean? So it, it, it depends on what it is, courses, online courses, you can have, um, you know, blueprints or whatever it is, um, you know, um, wh 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 whatever your business sells, just make sure you create little products that are self-sustainable. And once they're self-sustainable, they bring in little bits of income while you're doing other things that are growing your business. So think of intelligent ways to monetize your traffic, monetize your online, you know, consumer base. And if, it, if push comes to shove, don't forget to Uber or Airbnb or whatever it is to just bring in that consistent injection of cash. Because you, you can't do most of these things without a smooth flow of money coming in day in, day out. All right? So there's quite a lot of things that we did, guys, but most of them, you know, really, really work around being consistent, showing up and showing people that I can help them by actually helping them. Now, if any of these things have helped you, well, thank you for watching. If you want to share this video, be my guest. I was just letting you know the seven things that actually helped me double my business this year. And by double, I'm talking about, um, you know, we doubled our customer base. We doubled the value of the business in itself, the retention rate of our customers. Because in the whole two years, we were having customers not staying for more than six months. Now we've got a customer that's been with us for a whole full year. You know, we've doubled on our media appearances. We've doubled on the monetary front, which is what everybody else wants. We've doubled on the relationships around the business. We've doubled on the systems and procedures. We've doubled on the investments, either personally or within the business themselves. And we're buying in software as a service as of 14 January next year. So I will be, um, you know, telling you all about the software that Live Long Digital is going to be owning. So we're growing. We're growing towards the $100 million company goal that I have, and that is what my vision is. In the meantime, I really, really am excited for what's about to come in the next year. I hope you're as excited as I am too. And guess what? We are going to be doing this again in the next year. All right? I'm pledging that I'm going to be doing the lunch and learn for 30 minutes every single day again 2018. So if, if um, you thought you were going to get rid of me this year, I'm sorry. But if you're enjoying the content by now, then obviously this is going to be something we're going to be, um, you know, interacting with every single day. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day, guys, and have a fantastic uh, uh, rest of your week.